everybody. I welcome you to our first ever virtual community Thanksgiving service. We're worshiping this evening in different places, but we are united by the same Lord and we're united under the Lordship of Jesus Christ as a group of people who give thanks. And in 2020, it hasn't always been easy to give thanks, but I remind us all that as we worship this evening, we're called to have an attitude of thanksgiving. And even though we may be separated in place, we're bound together under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, and we can be thankful for that. Thomas Merton put it this way. He said, to be grateful is to recognize the love of God in everything he has given us. And he has given us everything. That's a truth that I lay claim to this evening, and a truth that I hope that you can claim as we're gathered together because God has indeed given us everything, and that is reason to worship. Would you pray with me? God, I thank you so much for all the things you've given us. I thank you that even in the midst of a pandemic, we can gather together virtually for worship. I pray that we would be the worshiping congregation this evening as we've come together to sing and speak our praises to you. And I pray that we would leave this worship differently than when we came into it, with a renewed attitude of thanksgiving and a renewed attitude of giving thanks in all things. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good evening, everybody. We come tonight to share with you the words of David, the second king of Israel, from the 100th Psalm. Listen to what David requests of all of us. He said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. May the blessed words from David lift our spirits at this time of season. Thanksgiving. Amen.
tradition has been thrown out the window here at the Valdez area Thanksgiving service, this one tradition remains. We're collecting an offering for a ministry in our community. And that ministry is to the Halliburton Academy weekend food program. We're asking folks to make their checks payable to Halliburton and to mail those checks directly to Halliburton. The mailing address for Halliburton Academy is P.O. Box 3238, Drexel, North Carolina, 28619. And as you make your checks out, please, in the memo line, indicate Weekend Food Program. Thank you for your generosity. Join me in a litany of thanksgiving. Let us give thanks to God our Father for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us. For the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families and our friends. For minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. For health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play. For the brave and courageous who are patient and suffering and faithful in adversity. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice. For the communion of saints in all times and places. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. All together, 
To him be praise and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Good evening, Pastor Kenneth B. Falls from the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church in Valdez. Certainly we greet you this blessed day in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're so happy to and humbled to have been asked to participate in this Thanksgiving series sponsored by the Valdez Ministerial Alliance. Would you join me? in a brief moment, in a prayer of thanks. Our Father in heaven, we thank you and we give thanks for the pleasure of being able to gather today by way of mass media. We thank you for this time of fellowship as a community of believers in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So Father, as we celebrate this day of Thanksgiving, we lift up the families who have been stricken by the coronavirus. But even in the midst of this pandemic, we find that there is still so much to be thankful for. Because Paul reminds us in his word that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are the call according to his purpose. So as we gather in our homes and our various places of celebrating, we pray for health and strength.
to carry on and to try to live our lives as you would have us. We ask your continued blessings on mankind, and may we all realize that our ultimate thanks goes to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary's rugged cross that all men, women, boys, and girls might have a right to the tree of life. We thank you sincerely from the depths of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Psalm 133 for our focus for our Thanksgiving service. And it is an honor for me to preach here today with you. Um, I was given that honor by the colleagues in ministry that I have known for a number of years now, some for almost the entire time I've been here for 13 years. I've been a minister for 35 and will retire in the end of January and um, was granted the, the privilege and the honor to share this message with you today. As we come to the reading of God's Word, let's, let us listen to the Holy Word proclaimed. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the color of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion, for, the le for there the Lord has ordained his blessing, life forevermore. When we think of Thanksgiving, there are many things that we are grateful for. Thinking of Thanksgiving in a season of COVID, after a very tumultuous year, with many challenges in our lives that we've experienced, there have been a number of folks who have, who have contracted COVID in our community here. There have been others who have died from COVID uh, many of us have lost loved ones in this past year, and we might be wondering, what do, we, what do we have to be thankful for? And yet we have the roofs over our heads, we have the jobs that we are afforded, we have opportunities to be part of a community of faith, even if it is at a distance with each other. We still know that community is there and we are able to correspond and contact each other through emails and Zoom meetings and other forms of contact, particularly the phone. So there are many things that we can be thankful for, the gift of our own health, our own well-being, and if we've had COVID, then the recovery from that. We also are thankful for the relationships that we have in our daily routine with our family and our close friends and fellow church members. What I'm particularly thankful for is the unity that I've experienced in 13 years of ministry here in Valdez with the other ministers and the churches as we have joined together. Each year we celebrate our relationships with each other by having a unified service for Thanksgiving, for Ash Wednesday, for Holy Week, all the five days of Holy Week, and then we participate in each other's ministries of, of outreach and service. And so I, as I developed this, I wanted us to reflect a little bit on that participation with each other. But in order to make sense out of why I've chosen this particular psalm, I want to start there first. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. The psalmist uses the metaphor of anointing oil here when he talks about the oil running down upon the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down over his collar and his robe. For ancient Israel, anointing oil was used to convey a divine blessing. It was a, a symbolic presence of the gift of God's Spirit flowing down over the worship leader. And so we hear the, the name Aaron being used, and Aaron was the brother of Moses and the first priest within the whole Hebrew tradition. And we recognize that in using that focus on Aaron, that the, the scriptures here are trying to convey to us that this is a most holy event. And all 
that convey the holiness of, of worship is also realized within the holiness when people of faith are together in unity. The kindred of our fellowship in our faith in Christ. That is how we interpret it as Christians. But it has been interpreted as a kindred of faith and a kindred nature of faith from the time of Moses to the, to the present. The anointing oil flowing down over the beard of Aaron's robes demonstrates how holy this moment is and how holy the unity of the kindred of, of faith is. Throughout my tenure at Waldensian Presbyterian, I value the unity of the spirit that I have shared with your ministers, all of them who have been part of the Ministerial Association. I'm deeply thankful for the camaraderie that the pastors of our Ministerial Association have developed as we pray for each other. As we pray for members of our own churches and others, we worship together each Thanksgiving. And we also have built up a coalition of shared ministry. And so let us look at those for a moment. The Dry Bottoms Program at First Christian Church, the Clothing Closet at First Baptist, the School Supplies of Cornerstone Baptist, the Halliburton Backpack Ministry of First Baptist Drexel and Faith Community Church, the Hygiene Closet, Food Pickup at First Methodist of Valdez, the Community Pantry at Waldensian Presbyterian, and the Older Adult Ministry of Mount Zion Baptist. Each of these ministries we share together in and support them financially through our care and, and encouragement for one another. That unity has been slowly developed over this past 13 years. And I want to recognize those who are the current ministers. Michael, Brenda, Kenneth, Francis, Johnny, Alicia, Josh, Jim, and Jay are truly my brothers and sisters in the faith. And I feel blessed to have worked, prayed, worshiped, served together, laughed with, broken bread with each of you. The Christian unity is a gift and one that requires our full effort to sustain. To each of you and to your congregations, consider these words from the Apostle Paul to the church at Ephesus. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of love and in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope through which you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all who is above all and in all and through all. Our unity of the spirit doesn't mean uniformity. And by that I mean we are together in the essentials of the faith that we've just mentioned there. We all worship one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We all proclaim the same Lord. We all have one authoritative Bible that informs and guides our lives and that we are attentive to as pastors in the faith and as congregations of the same faith. We are all guided by the same Holy Spirit. We celebrate the sacraments of communion and baptism we all have representational governments. We all have been redeemed sinners by the blood of Christ. And we all have been called to witness the word and deed of, to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, who alone we worship and serve. And that's how we are united in our common faith together. But there are differences, and those differences are good. Our orders of worship are different. We, are di we sing different hymns. We use different music in our worship. Some may shout amen, and others may only think amen. But we all affirm that which we share together in worship. 
We have different leadership styles. We baptize differently. We have models in our congregation of leadership and in our denominations that we follow that are different from each other. Friends, that is good because we are uniquely different individuals and we find the styles of worship and learning that we are comfortable with and yet we have a hand that reaches out beyond that as well, beyond our own four walls of a sanctuary here at Waldensian, beyond the walls of any of our churches, and we reach out and support one another together. English evangelist Roland Hill once wrote, I don't want the walls of separation between different orders of Christians to be destroyed, but only lowered, lowered so that we may shake hands a little easier over them. We do more than shake hands with each other in Valdez and Rutherford College and Drexel. We do more than that. We share together in each other's faith. We share together in each other's worship. And we share together in the essentials of who we are as Christians. We remain accepting and appreciative of each other's differences. Johann Thaler wrote, None understand better than the nature of real distinction than those who have entered into unity. We are united in being the hands and the feet of Christ together to our neighbors beyond any of the doors of our own churches. We celebrate our diversity as Christian denominations by joining together in our unity in Christ. And before we were assaulted by the COVID pandemic, we in the Valdez Ministerial Association had begun to plan some new ventures, some ways of involving ourselves in each other's lives more, in pulpit exchanges, to pursue additional ways that we Christians can participate and celebrate our unity with one another. I have long believed it is one of the most important things we Christians can and should do together. Two summers ago, when the town of Valdez and the Waldensian Presbyterian Church celebrated 125 years of ministry and of their anniversary as a town, the Ministerial Association hosted a remarkable event, which for me has stood out as the highlight of our efforts as Christian churches serving in unity. We hosted a community-wide vacation Bible school for the children of eight denominations or eight congregations together here, and we held that at the Trail of Faith. Those children who participated had a great and glorious time, and they learned about each other. And it was a joy to me to see children from each one of our churches participating in that, being led by our own ministers and by many of our lay leaders, being served snacks by different churches every night, being supported in each other as we sang songs together and we learned about our relationship to each other in Christ. That serves in my mind as one of the highlights one of the great joyful moments of ministry that we have shared together in Valdez and in the unified ministry beyond the Drexel and Rutherford College. I think that's a reflection of what the true kingdom of God is all about. When children can celebrate their unity in Christ and their unity of care for one another. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity, the psalmist says, for there the Lord has ordained his blessing, life forevermore. When we think about that and we think about the way that we have given life to our children in the past, two years ago now, I would hope it wouldn't be too long before we try to do something like that again. 
All of my life I've believed in the unity of Christians, and I've worked towards that, demonstrating it in each community that I have served. What is to keep us from breaking out of our denominational silos and having a, hosting events like maybe a community picnic sometime or a community-wide forum on racial harmony? These are things that we could be doing together and that I would hope that in the coming year after COVID crisis has passed that the Ministerial Association will begin to plan and lead for you. Lord knows that after the most divisive political election since 1860, our society needs Christians who will point the way towards unity. We desperately need that in our country today, and we need signs and groups of Christians who are joined together in common service and common love for one another beyond the political differences. We need something that shows the way towards the future, that brings the kingdom of God, which is a promised reality, into today, into our own lives. We have seen glimpses of that, you and I, over the past 13 years. But those glimpses continue to move us closer to what the kingdom of God is all about. And it is my hope that the unity of the Spirit and the bond of love will be something that we share together to promote that bond of peace with one another and with a society that is very polarized and broken these days. How good it is when kindred live together in unity for there the Lord ordained his blessing life forevermore. This Thanksgiving, I am grateful and very thankful for the gift of unity that we share in the Valdez Area Ministerial Association and for the participation of each of you who are part of the churches that celebrate with each other, who recognize that the bond of Christ in each of us is stronger than any division that the world might try to impose upon us. May we go into thanksgiving with a recognition of the very peace of Christ and of this gift of unity that we share with one another. For that is the promise of Christ our Lord to each of us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hello, I'm Jay Rabison, the pastor at Cornerstone Baptist Church, and it's my privilege to share with you just a few moments of a communion meditation. You know, if you think about it, so many of our celebrations involve food, birthday celebrations, different holiday celebrations of various and sundry kinds. Typically, there's food that's a part of it. In a very real sense, it comes from our spiritual heritage, connected with Christianity, but also with Judaism. You think about how many of the Jewish festivals involve food, the food comm commemorating and reminding us of certain spiritual truths. And Thanksgiving is no different than that. And I hope that as a part of your Thanksgiving celebration, you're remembering the spiritual heritage and the spiritual foundation that is at the heart of Thanksgiving. And as you gather with family and friends, that you'll remember the spiritual heritage that's a part of our celebration together. Now, certainly, we all know that given this year of the pandemic, our celebration is being a little bit different. Maybe we're not going to be able to be with family and friends at the same level that we'd like to as a result of this pandemic. But I encourage you to still remember the heritage of the meal, the heritage of a meal, whatever format it might take for you this year, the heritage of giving thanks to God. And so I invite you to gather along with us virtually as we celebrate our heritage as brothers and sisters in Christ by celebrating the meal, the meal of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the meal that we call communion, the meal that we call the Lord's Supper, the meal that we might call the Holy Mass, the meal that we might call the Eucharist.
got for you some elements that you might have in your household as well. Please feel free to share some of those or to gather some of those with family and friends so that we might celebrate together the Lord's Supper. I'll give you just a minute to gather those things. You can certainly pause this and gather those things in your household right now should you choose to. Well, thanks for doing that. You know, I do believe that it's important for us to be together, to have a sense of solidarity, to have a sense of communion and community together in the midst of this pandemic. In the midst of all of the challenges that you and I have faced, it's important for us to say thanks. You know, one of the words that's used for communion is Eucharist, and that word means thanks. Thanks. How can we give thanks in this year? Don't you know how many things we've lost? Don't you know we've, we've lost you know, close to a quarter million of our fellow Americans as a result of this pandemic? Don't you know how many holiday celebrations, how many jobs have been lost? Don't you know how much we've lost? How can we give thanks? We can give thanks because we come to the Lord's table in need. We can give thanks because it's not your table or my table. It's the Lord's table. We can give thanks because we come in humility. So as we prepare to receive these elements together, let me invite you to take a minute and to give thanks. Give thanks for what? Give thanks for a level of health that you're able to enjoy this service together. Give thanks for those who might be gathered around you as you're viewing this service, family or friends. Give thanks for the freedom that we have as Americans to worship according to the dictates of our hearts. Give thanks for the brothers and sisters that you have in Christ at a variety of different churches who made this service possible. Give thanks for the fact that you and I have the ability to read God's word. Give thanks for the freedom that we have as Americans. Give thanks for those who have gone before us, who have sacrificed in our families in order that we might have education and opportunities that maybe our forebears didn't have. Give thanks for the food that we eat. Give thanks for the essential workers who have planted, harvested, produced, and shipped and put the food that you and I enjoy on our store shelves. Give thanks for the fact that you and I have mind enough to be able to think. Give thanks for the resources that we've been given. Give thanks for the fact that we are going to make it through this challenging time. Give thanks for those who have carried us through Give thanks that this too shall pass. Give thanks most of all, because as followers of Jesus Christ, all of our lives are cast against. Remembering the body of Jesus Christ that's broken for us, the blood of Jesus Christ that's shed for us. And so I invite you to join me right now in taking whatever symbol you choose, holding it, saying, God, I give you thanks for the body of Jesus Christ that's broken for my sins. That God didn't just remain in heaven, but that God became flesh, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And give thanks to Jesus Christ, the incarnate Son of God, came into this world and went to Calvary's cross for you and for me. Give thanks for the blood of Jesus shed on that cross that you and I might find forgiveness and hope. This is the blood of Jesus Christ shed for you and for me. We give thanks. And I give thanks for all of you who join me in remembering our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Well, church, I want to thank you for spending this time worshiping with us as we worship with one another in this different way, in this different time. I'm so grateful that we're able to do so still.
for all those who participated in this project and helped to, to preach or to read or to pray or to offer music. We thank you beyond words. You are so amazing to want to help us worship with one another and feel like community even in the midst of this pandemic. I'm grateful as well for each member of this community, all of you watching, whether you be members of any of the churches represented or not, we are grateful for you because you offer something to the world that only you have, that God has given to you. You reflect him into this world and we pray that you can do that in a very real way. And we pray that we were helpful in that even tonight. We're especially grateful today for the Reverend Dr. Kevin Frederick, for all the years that he has committed to this community and to the years beyond this where he would commit to them as well. So on behalf of every pastor in our area, every member of the church that, that you have faithfully shepherded all these years and every single member of our community that you've reached out to in some way, thank you. From the absolute bottom of our hearts, we are so grateful for you and can't wait to see what God will do with you in this next phase of ministry. So as we go, I pray that we would remember how thankful we are to be because of all that God is to us. This holy and mighty God that has brought us from where we were and will bring us one day to where he is. Be grateful. He loves us so. So as we go, I pray that you can go in hope, a hope that can give you all the fuel you need to keep on going in this life through whatever you might face. I pray that you might go in joy, that you might find the joy of the Creator that gives us the air we breathe and, and all the changing seasons and the beauty of this great earth. I pray that you can go in love, a love that is eternal and has been offered to you a perfect love so that you can offer it to the world. And I pray that we all can go in peace, a peace that passes all understanding as we love and serve our world.